What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are doing a book review of crypto assets written by Chris Berninski and Jack Dattar. Just finished reading this. It was an incredibly educational, insightful, clear and concise read that goes through the entire history, Bitcoin, the blockchain, and everything related to this new asset class that Chris Berninski has called crypto assets. They call it the Innovative Investor's Guide to Bitcoin and Beyond. This book has you know praise from all sorts of people and justifiably so. I believe this book is gonna go down in history as one of the foundational building blocks of the overall mainstream thought of what crypto assets are, how to value them and their history. This is a must read for anybody who is interested in the blockchain or Bitcoin, no matter what your level of understanding is. If you have no idea, you've never, you're just hearing about blockchain and Bitcoin for the first time, or you're an expert who's owned Bitcoin for five years, I think you should read this book. Either way, um, people are already comparing this to The Intelligent Investor, which I have a copy of right here, which was a book written by Benjamin Graham, which eventually became the building block for Warren Buffett's own thought process about how to value companies and his whole investing philosophy. Ben Graham was Warren Buffett's mentor and wrote this book, which was the foundational building block for how to invest in stocks. And they are, people are comparing crypto assets to that and that this will be the foundational building block for how we think about this new type of asset class like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's just to give you guys a scope of how important just the magnitude of this book. Anyway, I'm gonna go through some charts and favorite points in the book. Um, there's no way I can get around to everything because this book just does such a great job of covering every facet of the crypto economy. You gotta get a copy for yourself. I'm gonna put a link in the description. So the book starts out going through you know, a history of what Bitcoin is, how it started, how Satoshi Nakamoto, the anonymous founder of Bitcoin, actually launched the currency, what the really early days looked like of Bitcoin, and how that was such an important landmark because Bitcoin was the first real world implementation of this thing called the blockchain technology which now you're hearing about everywhere and is the same backbone that every single crypto asset is built upon. So that's the first couple chapters. And then chapter four goes into how Chris Berninski and Jack Tatar classify different crypto assets. Now they put these into three different buckets. The first is cryptocurrencies, things like Bitcoin, which are actually a means of transacting and storing value in a unit of account, just like the US dollar is. Then there's crypto commodities, which actually represent ownership of a digital asset. The most well-known crypto commodity that they point out is Ethereum. The third basket of crypto assets they point out is crypto tokens, which they say provision finished digital goods and services. Then there's actually a fourth category of crypto assets, which is not in this book, but that I heard Chris Berninski talk about recently on a podcast, which is crypto collectibles of which things like crypto kitties would be. So it's really important. I think this is a fascinating breakdown you know, of the taxonomy. These aren't just all cryptocurrencies, which is a broad term that a lot of people use to talk about the entire asset class. These are crypto assets, which is a word that encompasses a bunch of different sectors within this new asset class, the currencies, commodities, tokens, and collectibles. This book also really gave me a new appreciation for Bitcoin because, you know, some of the examples they cite of how Bitcoin was so important in the fact that it was the first ever decentralized blockchain to be working around the globe. And this is a major breakthrough in technology. And, you know, the Bitcoin team is constantly improving the software and operating system behind what Bitcoin is. But it's so important to understand. And this book really made me help me appreciate that Bitcoin was the first real world application in one of these decentralized cryptocurrencies. And that is why it has such a big deal and important place in history. They do an incredible job breaking down all the fundamentals of Bitcoin. This chart here, you know, on page 37, does a great job at showing, you know, the dilution rate of Bitcoin, what they call a mathematically metered supply and how the main, and how, you know, the rate of dilution of Bitcoin continues to decrease as it reaches maturity. You know, great overview with these charts. And the book is filled with little charts like this. You know, I'm a visual learner, so I love this. Then they do an explanation of different crypto commodities, you know, more like Ethereum and going into the entire history of Ethereum, how Vitalik created it, how he was originally working for the Bitcoin magazine. I mean, just so much history here that really gives you an appreciation for the space. And what they did an incredible job at describing, which I previously was not too familiar with, was the DAO. And this is going to go down as an incredible, important case study in cryptocurrencies. Uh, the DAO was basically an ICO that went on top, or a DAP that went on top of the Ethereum blockchain. It wasn't launched properly, and they needed to actually reverse all the transactions that happened. This was the catalyst behind a hard fork where some people didn't want to reverse the transactions on the blockchain. 
because that ruins the entire entire principle of the immutable decentralized blockchain. But because it was still so early in Ethereum's gaining ground as a technology, they, Ethereum community actually decided to reverse the blockchain, do a hard fork. This resulted in two different types of Ethereum. Ethereum, which is the normal one today that everybody uses, and then Ethereum Classic, which is the original blockchain without the reverse transactions. And this is so important because in many ways it sets precedent for what these early blockchains can do and how flexible they can be with reversing transactions given a community's overall sentiment. The explanation of this was incredible and this is just one example of how Chris Berninsky and Jack Tatar do such an amazing job at breaking down all these complex nuances and really giving you like a fully fledged history les lesson on what happened in the crypto space to get it to where it is today. Chapter 7, called The Most Compelling Alternative Asset of the 21st Century, provides a really fascinating look at the returns of Bitcoin as an asset class, comparing it to a bunch of other, you know, stocks, the broader market, the NASDAQ, Facebook, Amazon, and showing you how you would have done investing in Bitcoin. You know, it starts out showing the just absolute returns where clearly Bitcoin, you know, we already know, outperformed almost all of these asset classes over the past, you know, five years. But then I think it's really interesting how they also go into showing the volatility of Bitcoin as an asset class, not only how the volatility of Bitcoin and all these crypto assets continues to decrease as they gain prevalence, but actually how the returns of Bitcoin using the sharp ratio, which adjusts for volatility, actually still outperforms every other asset class. Credible research here, and I think this really gives you a great understanding of how, just how well Bitcoin has done relative to everything else, you know, since it launched in 2008. Page 114, I thought they had an incredible breakdown here where they show the charts of the average increasing supply of different things, namely Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the US dollar, and gold. So you can see how the inflation of the US dollar compares to the inflation of Bitcoin, how the amount of dollars outstanding continues to increase. Actually, same with the amount of gold as more and more gold is mined each year. I didn't even know that. And how the supply of Bitcoin is actually mathematically metered and gets smaller and smaller. And the dilution rate is actually now far below that of the US dollar or even gold. A picture I think is worth a thousand words here for the three front runners for, you know, kind of a store of value in the modern world. Also, page 119, an incredibly great chart which just summarizes you know how young crypto assets you're not actually buying what the network is today you're buying an expectation of what the network will be and its functionality in the future and so this is just a great kind of thought exercise to wrap your head around that when you're investing in very young crypto assets it's like investing in startups you're not buying them for what the business looks like today but you're buying them for what the business will look like in the future then there's a whole chapter on bubbles and speculation which really puts in context you know what the bitcoin bubble looks like to things like the original ponzi scheme and the tulip bubble, tulip mania. And they even have this awesome quote where one tulip at the peak of the tulip bubble was sold for nine tons of, wait, let me get this right. One tulip bulb went for nine pounds of gold. So just an incredibly, and one of the best breakdowns of the tulip bubble overall that I've ever seen, just a great history lesson so you can really put the rise of Bitcoin into context. And they also do a great job at comparing, you know, really rationally, what was the value of these tulips in real life and what is the value of Bitcoin and how there really is a lot more value and tangible fact behind Bitcoin's rise and how even though it gets compared to tulips a lot, it is actually in fact very, very different. Then in page 204, 205, they're trying to break down the different ways to value a crypto asset. Chris Berniski is big on that sort of PE ratio of crypto assets, which he basically calculates the amount of dollars being transacted in a crypto asset, taking the network value and dividing by that number. So for Bitcoin, he has noticed that Bitcoin usually trades at about or settles at about 50 times its transaction volume. So just a quick example, uh, you know, Bitcoin transacts about a billion dollars per day. If it maintained that 50 X ratio, the network value of all the Bitcoin out there would be about 50 billion. So, you know, these are the very early stages of us seeing some of the fundamental valuation metrics of crypto assets. Love that part of the book as well. Chapter 14, they go into mining exchanges and wallets, the best breakdown and simplest and clearest concise breakdown of how the actual mining process works that I've ever read. These are things that are very complex and the book is long, it's like 300 pages, but the breakdowns they give, especially in this chapter, help me so much. You know, they break down, you know, the different types of wallets, what actually happens to your crypto assets when you're storing them on an exchange like Coinbase versus when you keep them in your own hardware wallet versus writing your private key on a piece of paper and putting that in a safe. Goes through the pros and cons of all these technologies 
technologies. It's not just high level theory in here. It's really like practical know-how about how the blockchain actually works and how you can actually, you know, store your Bitcoin in real life. Then the last thing I wanted to bring up here is on page 254, they do a really interesting comparison of the value of protocols on the internet and the web versus crypto assets. And this is a debate I've been having with some of my crypto asset friends and we are in the middle of it. So I'd love to know your guys' opinion of sort of this theory that in the web, you know, things like HTTPS and SMTP, which are the protocols underlying the web have been commoditized and don't get much value while the applications built on top of them, Amazon, Facebook, Google, are actually the companies that capture all the value. Now, Chris Berninsky has a theory that because of the way the incentives are aligned and the way you actually have to use the native token or currency of a crypto asset to use the network, the network or protocol layer of crypto assets will actually be where all the value is. And they even have a quote that says a protocol should grow larger in monetary value than any single application on top of it. And this is kind of my bull case of Ethereum, which is, as far as I can tell, the leading and most, you know, in terms of market share, biggest protocol layer out there in the crypto asset world because all these dApps are going to get built on top of it. And if Ethereum itself is always bigger than the dApps built on top of it, then that means Ethereum could have massive potential. And a lot of people call crypto assets Web 3.0. And I think one of the biggest distinctions of Web 3.0 is where does the value sit? Is it the applications layer or is it at the protocol layer? And here they're clearly taking a bet on the protocol layer. I'd love to know what you guys think about that. At the end of the book, they have a list of all these different resources where, uh, you know, you can go to get info on different crypto assets. Overall, man, this book was an incredible read. I'm going to probably have to read it again to get all the information out of it. Um, I'm going to keep going back to it. I've already, you know, brought it out to meet up with my friends and show them a bunch of graphs and we have incredible conversations. Started off that. I don't know. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. I'm giving it five out of five stars, but like even beyond just being a good read, I think this is a necessary read if you want to be an informed, what they call innovative investor in this new era of digital assets. The entire category of crypto assets is only going to gain more and more relevance. It's going to hit multi-trillions of dollars in total network value in a few years. And I think you can't ignore it. If you want to be in the know about the future of finance, then do yourself a favor and pick yourself up a copy of Crypto Assets. You will not regret it. This is in my opinion, the best book out right now about the entire blockchain Bitcoin space. Huge shout out to Chris Bernitsky and Jack Tatar for writing this. Unbelievable job. Definitely follow Chris Bernitsky on Twitter if you wanna, if you like this book or like the ideas because he always tweets amazing stuff. Chris Bernitsky, if you're watching this, hit me up. Let's get coffee in the city. Anyway, this is Hyperchange, book review, crypto assets, five out of five stars. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.